نبدا طيب السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته ثانك يو فيري ماتش فور ايفري ون تو اتند توداي I'm Dr. Ahmed Tarabji. I'm a consultant uh, internist and nephrologist. I'm also a geriatrician and also teach at the KSU uh, internal medicine department. I'm also a medical educator, certified medical educator, certified uh, quality uh, officer, and uh, uh, also I have a master's degree in uh, public health. So the topic was given to me today to talk about the art of choosing your future specialty. It's a very uh, important topic but very delicate and uh, thorny one because it's uh, not an easy uh, topic to deal with uh, first of all i'd like to thank uh, dr uh, nasser the one who really approached me initially about this topic and then he communicated with the uh, the city council to uh, dr hamoud i put doctor is inshallah ta'ala future doctor very soon who arranged for this uh, uh, meeting today and really it's a rich uh, uh, program you have over, I think, two and a half weeks. And I also thank, thank Dr. Yazid Husseini, who was our previous uh, KSU graduate. Uh, he studied with us here, then he's doing now his residency at uh, King Faisal Specialist Hospital. Uh, just a disclaimer, there's no guarantee my uh, uh, points will help you to secure uh, uh, your residency, but inshallah, we'll have some guidance uh, if you believe in yourself after believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and depending on him. Uh, I was given these six uh, uh, questions from uh, uh, Mahmoud, Al Hamoud, sorry, and uh, I will go through those questions later on. But uh, uh, first of all, I will start with some background. And to choose your specialty, it really depends on who you are. What's your, who's, what is your personality? What do you like? What you don't like? What are your strengths, your weaknesses? I have this uh, uh, slide from uh, 2009. Uh, from BMJ, but uh, I don't have exactly the, the uh, citation. It's really talk about, uh, uh, it's funny, but it has a lot of merit. So it depends on your personality. If you're a crazy person, in general, you don't like to tolerate uh, uh, stress and deal with a lot of uh, challenges and so on. Uh, it depends on your attention span, you might need to choose psychiatry or emergency medicine. So two different uh, uh, spectrum. If you're a hardworking person, but they don't like much, uh, 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 or like much details and, and you, you want to go in, uh, uh, deep, like to talk to adult people, become an internist, like to talk to uh, kids, become a pediatrician. If you are a mean person, this is just at the face value. Uh, surgeons are not mean at all, but this uh, uh, part of their stressful job, then become a surgeon. If you have uh, no much uh, attitude, uh, you, you like just to work behind the scene, you can bec become a pathologist or an anesthesiologist. Uh, if you're uh, uh, not much hardworking person, you don't like to work uh, in the uh, uh, public area, you can become ophthalmologist or dermatologist. But if you're afraid uh, of light, you can become a radiologist. Again, these just a, a snapshot of some personality traits can guide you to become one of those specialty, but it's not written in a stone. You can change. We are not born to become an ophthalmologist or internist or a nephrologist. We are born with some qualities, with some personality, and life experience can change us a lot. Uh, as an internist, uh, we always depend on evidence-based medicine. So uh, here I'm going to go through some literature review about how people uh, uh, chose their specialty. One article was published uh, in 2005 from Australia talking about their graduate, almost uh, 4,000 graduates. And these are the qualities uh, uh, or top, uh, uh, can I say, five points they took into consideration when they chose their uh, specialty. First one, almost 80%, the appraisal of own skills and aptitudes. What are your capacities? What are you good at? What are your skills? Again, skills are not, uh, you are not born with, you can develop them. And we'll talk about it a little bit later today. So uh, this, what you can develop, yes, you can, uh, uh, some people are born with some kind of skills, but most of the skills can be learned. The second point, intellectual content of the specialty. I'm a nephrologist. I like details. I like thinking deeply. I'd like to get a broad picture. So very broad and very deep, but not everybody can do this. Some people are really more uh, uh, from outside, you can say, dermatologists. 
they're broad, they look at the whole body, but they're more superficial. That's their uh, uh, personality, nothing wrong with it. Third one, work culture. That's very, very important. Uh, how you can balance between your life uh, as a person and your life as a profession, between your family and your work. Surgeon works uh, very hardly. Uh, internists, they work at least 40 hours a week. Some other specialty, uh, for example, dermatologists rarely work on night time. They rarely work on night time. So uh, that uh, uh, depends on your personality and what you like to do and what you are willing to do. Flexibility of working arrangement. Uh, cardiologist, very difficult specialty. I used to like to do cardiology, but not anymore. Uh, it's so much demanding. It takes maybe nine, 10 years to become a good cardiologist. Uh, very stressful life, doing cath in the middle of the night, uh, saving life at the last moment. That's very stressful. If you can deal with it, fine. If you cannot, try to avoid uh, that. Hours of work, I mentioned early, majority of people work around 40 hours a week, but sometimes it can be up to 70 hours a week. If you do ICU, it can be very stressful. A whole week stretch of ICU coverage can really uh, take uh, uh, so much of your energy, mental energy and emotional energy. For uh, uh, women, uh, they have those three main uh, points. Again, looking at the circumstances, hours of work, and opportunity to work flexible hours. Don't forget uh, our female, they're gonna have marriage and kids and so on, so they have extra uh, uh, demands on their life beside uh, the husband. This goes in details and this is statistics, if you like statistics and num even talk about odds ratio. Just uh, I'll summarize having uh, two types of factors, ex extrinsic factors and intrinsic factors. So the environment and who you are. Another study and it's meta-analysis published just last year, so it's a fresh one. And they look at seven, five studies, almost uh, uh, three quarter of, or more than three quarter of a million of people. And this is their list that uh, the factors influence their uh, specialty or specialty choice. Academic interest. Uh, I'm an academician, but I also worked uh, for nine years in a rural hospital in Canada. So I have both uh, sides uh, uh, of experience, you can say. Different, different type of work, different type of interest, different type of demands. Competencies. Uh, some uh, specialties are very competent uh, to, uh, to become a surgeon in the West. is not an easy task to, to find a, a training spot. Uh, competency even after graduation to find a job and so on. Lifestyle. We talked earlier about the uh, flexible work schedules. Again, how much do you like to put into work? Some people, they like to have very light work load. Some people, they are very, you can say, even close to be workaholic. So that's, uh, again, back to your uh, uh, personality and your capacity. Patient service orientation. Uh, being a nephrologist, it takes so much time to deal with patients because they are so uh, complex cases. They have so much issues, whether physical issues, uh, mental issues, psychological issues, social issues, financial issues, and so on. So it depends, again, on your uh, personality. Medical teachers or mentors that have a very big impact will, will come into it in a few moments. Having a role model, somebody you uh, want to follow. You want to, of course, you cannot be a copy, a copy uh, full, full copy, but you can really uh, aspire to become close to that person uh, who really inspired you for this specialty or that specialty. I'll mention this in my uh, experience later on, inshallah. Career opportunities. This is important to know about the job market after graduation. You become a surgeon, plastic surgeon, neurosurgeon, uh, uh, nephrologist, uh, geriatrician, uh, general internist, uh, all those specialties. You need to look at the job market uh, for next probably 10 years by the time you graduate. How is that uh, will change your opportunity uh, to uh, find a decent job that uh, matches your goals? Workload again, working hours, that's very important. But you see here less than 50%. So almost this 50% above, but this is less than 50% of people, but still significant factors. Income. This is one of the questions I received from the uh, student council. Some people think about it. They have some uh, family commitment. They have some uh, debt, uh, different reasons. That's an important factor. It's not number one, but it's also an important factor. Uh, money is uh, the tool of life. Length of training. Again, I mentioned early the cardiology. It takes nine, 10 years to become cardiologist. Uh, general surgery or even probably plastic surgery might take much longer, seven, eight years. To become a, a family medicine or GP might take maybe three, four years shorter. So again, depends how 
uh, fast you want to reach your uh, uh, competency in, in, in graduation and start working. It depends uh, based on individual uh, uh, factors. Prestige, this is important. We know doctor or doctoring is a noble profession, but some professions have more prestige than other profession. Uh, this is culture oriented uh, factor. Some people respect maybe a surgeon more than respect uh, an internist or vice versa. Depends on, on the culture and can vary from a city to other city or from uh, country to other country and so on. And finally, advice from others. That's a, a very important uh, factor. Yes, quarter of people here uh, reported being an important factor. But in reality, I think we depend a lot on this uh, information, how to choose. And again, I'll mention this in my experience uh, uh, later, inshallah. I found only one study in Saudi Arabia, and this was a PhD thesis for uh, Dr. Mahmoud. I think he's from King Khalid University. This was his PhD thesis, and I put the link here if you want to go in details, but uh, we'll just focus about this chapter that he published uh, uh, eight years ago about the preferences between medical students in Saudi Arabia. So it was a cross-sectional questionnaire, uh, almost 600 students, uh, very good response rate. Uh, he found that the male student we're looking mainly for less competitive field, so they can easily get the, the residency training or apprenticeship training, shortest of specialist, so they're looking at uh, a job market uh, in the future, and diversity of patients, uh, because probably stimulate them more to stay in, in the, uh, in loving the profession. So the top three specialty, uh, or specialties were surgery, medicine, orthopedics. For female, they're looking for prestige of specialty and teaching opportunities. Again, different perspective based on, on, uh, on uh, gender factors. The top three specialties, still surgery, but then you have pediatrics, that's I think understandable for a female, and ophthalmology uh, as a third specialty. So this is only one study I found in, in, in Saudi Arabia. Uh, I mentioned earlier about having advice from other people. And when I was a resident in the US, I used to really uh, have, give a lot of bad comments on family medicine. In family medicine, we're smarter, we're hard, more hard working people, we know more, we think about details, we look at the patient uh, and broad uh, physiological, pathological, and so on. And family medicine, I always used to say, they know just a or they have one flower from every uh, garden. But this was not true. I changed my mind later on when I became a geriatrician or did my geriatric fellowship. It was part of the family medicine uh, program. So hearing from other people about this specialty or that specialty, whether a positive or negative uh, comment, will affect us in one way or the other to choose that specialty. Uh, I'm from Syria. When I was a medical student, it's very well known. Everyone wants to become a cardiologist. That's a highly prestige specialty. It's very good income, a lot of work. Every hospital wants a cardiologist, very popular disease, and so on. But then when I, or when I studied the intermedicine, I was a, a, a medical student, I enjoyed it a lot. It was excellent. The teacher was excellent. He taught us cardiology is very uh, uh, easy way to understand and, and love it. When I did my nephrology uh, course, I hated it. The teacher was so bad, all patients have uh, incisional disease, they all need uh, dialysis, they will die, they have hematuria, proteinuria, you cannot differentiate between all types of GN. I hated uh, nephrologists. However, when I went to US, I changed my mind. It was way different. I worked for, for nine months in, in a private hospital before I went to US, and I worked mainly in a CCU, and I worked with cardiologists, and I learned a lot about cardiology. Uh, about ECG and uh, cath and MI and so on. But when I did my first CC rotation in US, it was completely, uh, uh, can I say bad experience, just cath, echo, echo cath, nothing else. I didn't like it. The practice different than the knowledge itself, different than the information. So let's go back to this study. Here we talk about those uh, comments, they call them banter that influenced the, the training doctors to choose their career. Uh, they quoted other studies. One study in the UK uh, showed that 37, so one third of doctors, had changed their choice uh, during their first two postgraduate years. This is their internship foundation years. So when they become, when they start to taste, you can say, 
the experience of the specialty. Studying in the classroom is different than the practice. Study, as I mentioned earlier, cardiology for me was excellent. Top notch specialty, I will do it. When I start to practice, different perspective. You start to taste the, the real life. So one third changed their mind when they did their internship. Another study, 25% of recently graduated doctors seriously considered specialty did not subsequently pursue that career. They changed their mind, 25% when they graduated. So uh, that's uh, really a, it's not a small number. Uh, another study, 67% of medical students reported personally receiving non-constructive criticism about their preferred specialty. I always ask whenever I get in terms of a student, what is your uh, goal uh, in the future? What are you gonna do as a resident uh, training? And based on this one, I try to tailor my teaching for that specialty, but at the same time, try to also give them the broad uh, taste of other outside their scope of, of, of uh, uh, focus. Uh, so it's very common, even in the West, that's almost two thirds of the student receive uh, bad comments about their preferred uh, specialty. And I will show you a few uh, slides about uh, real comments from those uh, students. So here they define banter as informal exchanges. This fits the hidden curriculum. Hidden curriculum, that's what we teach by our action different than what we teach in the classroom or in a speech or a lecture and so on. So it's informal ex exchanges about the characteristics of different specialties and those who practice with them. So here they talk about, of course, this is a, a research study, so they have to go back to the uh, research models and, and uh, the, the theoretical uh, principles. So there's a propaganda model that's what we use in daily life. We think that I can influence the student or, or the intern to do this specialty or that specialty, this propaganda. So there's some intention behind those uh, comments, but there is a person specialty fit model. And from their experience, this is the most popular one. Yes, trainee will hear about comments from me, bad or good, positive or negative, but they don't take it at a face value. They uh, uh, assimilate this with the other experiences to fit their uh, uh, personality, to fit their goals of life, So, which is a good uh, uh, result of this study. Uh, uh, so what we say, uh, what we act, what we comment, uh, sometimes even by body language, uh, not verbally, still does not influence them 100%, but it has some influence. So it's one piece of the uh, uh, puzzle they use to make the decision. So uh, while banter is seen as positioning specialties in a status hierarchy, so hierarchy here meaning top surgeon, cardiologist, uh, uh, internist, psychiatrist, and maybe GP at the bottom, this is in the propaganda model, more that's uh, 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 some people think about other as hierarchy, top and bottom, but in real life, it's not reality. So there are other factors such as work-life balance, we mentioned early, feeling at home, that's very important, you have a fit, do you feel that you are at the right place, right time, in the right program, in the right specialty? That will be more important factors to take into consideration. So I'll give you a couple of slides about comments from those uh, uh, students uh, in this study. It's always playing into a culture, like surgeons are cantankerous and egotists. That is the uh, caricature of a surgeon in kind of doctor land. And I think the caricature of psychiatrists is they are like loopy, not real medics and kind of like soft doctors. Medics here, they use me for internist. So this is one uh, perspective. I used to hate psychiatry. I didn't like it. Uh, was the least uh, probably understandable uh, specialty to me. But when I started to practice uh, nephrology in Canada and see a lot of, of uh, the other patients with so much uh, depression and anxiety, I changed my mind. I started to prescribe antidepressant, anti-anxiety uh, anti medication, and it worked. So I changed my mind. Practice, new experience, so you revise your, your mentality and your thinking. Another uh, quote, oh my God, no, you'd be wasted as a surgeon. You have to do medicine. You've just be completely wasted. This is opinion of the mentor. Probably an internist, don't like surgeon. So when a medical student express uh, he or his or her wishes to become a surgeon, this was a comment they received. Uh, so it's not a, a good comment, but sometimes uh, it's good to hear the other side of the story. So make you think deeply about your specialty and give you more clarity about the decision you're gonna make 
Yes, you know about the other side, but you're firm about your decision. As they say. One of your more senior doctors might say, why has the GP referred? This is such a bad referral letter. Why? Whining about the GP, meaning undermining their knowledge, undermining their work ethics, and so on. So that's a give a stigma, a bad stigma of the GP. But it, as I said, it's not uh, true. Yes, maybe they are more superficial, but they do a lot of good work. They follow patients from the time they are born till the time they are uh, till they die, from infancy till geriatric life till old age. This is uh, probably uh, uh, I remember one uh, GP who knows uh, three generations in one family. He knows the the, the, the uh, father and then his son and his grandson. He was he was young when the the uh, I can say the first generation met him and then he followed them along. So he knows the whole family, become part of the family. So this is one uh, aspect you look at if you would like to become a family uh, doctor or uh, a GP. This is a long quote, but I think it's important. Specialties are known for their character traits. So again, there are some traits I mentioned in the first slide can fit your personality. In general, medics, meaning internists, are people who like to take a problem and think about a problem and work out the answer to a problem. So broad, deep, back to physiology, pathology, uh, immunology, and so on. Whereas surgeons are people who like to jump in and do things and fix the problem. Mr. Fix, you can say. Quick, open, cut, fix, done. But I think uh, that's what people talk about. But I also think that's true. That's a realistic element of specialty that you have to consider. So I guess, yes, I've spoken to people about specialties. Try to work out what would suit me and my personality. But I don't think the stereotypes and the banter and the hierarchy and stuff, I don't think that's really affected me. But a lot of times we don't know what's in our subconscious mind. To me, I think one way or, other, one way or the other, those comments will affect us. But how much, 10%, 50%, that depends from a person to other person. Uh, another uh, quote, I felt, so I felt I could see myself there, but there wasn't anyone that I could be like. I want to be like you, if that makes sense. This was a female student talking about a specialty, but there's no female uh, role model. Uh, so that's a challenge for uh, our female student. They like to become a surgeon, but in that specialty, plastic surgery, for example, I don't know, I'm, not, uh, I'm just guessing, there's no role model female surgeon to aspire to, to follow the footsteps. So looking for role model is important to study them as, as a case, and study their, their experience. Well, I don't want to end up in a specialty. I want to work really, really hard and challenge myself and achieve a goal. And I don't necessarily feel like I personally would get that from GP. So here kind of deb debating between GP or specialty. Don't like to do specialty, but don't like to do GP either. So kind of in between. And a lot of my friends have also felt, oh, I don't know what to do. I'll probably just a, become a GP. If you don't know what to do, it's almost that default kind of job. It's not true. This probably culture, uh, 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 the culture affected that uh, stereotype or stigma. But as I said earlier, GP has a role and has an important role like any other uh, subspecialty. I remember uh, uh, a very, uh, very good medical student, fifth year, worked with me. Very knowledgeable, uh, excellent her clerking and so on. But she wanted to do uh, dermatology. I thought she can be an excellent internist. She wanted to do dermatology. I said, nothing wrong with it. I always say this advice, nothing wrong with any specialty as long as you excel in it, as long as you give it your best and you do the best job. That's, uh, I think, a matter at the end. So the conclusion of this study, two questions you have to uh, ask yourself. What will, work, what will working in this specialty be like? So envision yourself when you graduate. And am I the right sort of person for the job? So it's interaction between you as a person and that specialty. Uh, another uh, article published in BMJ, uh, they have a, a few points to consider when choose a, a specialty. First one, make the most of undergraduate experiences as a medical student and as an intern. Those are really important uh, experiences. What do you like as a content in terms of knowledge? Which specialty attracts you more? You might have two or three on your list. That's fine. Then during the internship, try to uh, uh, choose, especially your electives, 
and those specialty, try to get a, a taste and see, does it really uh, uh, pull the trigger for you? Does it really fit what you're thinking or really find the uh, unknown that you can change your mind? So this will lead to second point, plan and target taster experiences. Uh, I know some even students that they can do their elective during I think their fourth year uh, in Saudi Arabia and some specialty. So if you have a choice, choose that uh, one that attracts you to get a taste and talk to those uh, residents, fellows, consultants, uh, practicing people and so on, talk and get their experiences. Uh, uh, do not take it as written in a stone as a must, but as an experience, human experience worth to uh, think about and get uh, lessons from. Third point, ensure your perception of a specialty is clear and accurate. Look at this point, perception. We cannot know fully till we are immersed in that specialty, but good to have some uh, information ahead of time that's clear and accurate. Again, the banter, the bad comments I mentioned early might not be accurate uh, comments. So you have to really investigate and, and uh, 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 take it only at the face value and look for deep uh, uh, information or message behind it. So talking to a senior trainees and consultants in a specialty, that's really important. Attending a specialty clinic, uh, pulmonary clinic, rheumatology clinic, uh, plastic surgery, maybe going to o OR, for example. That uh, maybe give you a different taste. Uh, doing on call, uh, delivering babies uh, for uh, OB. All this can give you a different uh, uh, perspective. Use available career management resources. I will talk about this a little bit later. Need to know who you are, know yourself. This is the first important part, not only in medicine, in every uh, uh, field in life. You need to know who you are, who I am, what are my strengths, my weaknesses, how can I deal with stress, how can I deal with uh, uh, challenges, what uh, interests me, what uh, I don't like about, uh, what kind of people uh, I like to uh, be friend with and people avoid and so on. Uh, Myers-Briggs type indexing for personality, for example. I'm ESTJ, uh, more thinking, task-oriented, uh, extrovert and so on type of person. This is my personality. Uh, so some specialty can fit this more than other specialty. Learning styles inventory, Honey and Mom for one of them. So how you like to learn? By reading, by listening, uh, in a group, uh, as an individual person and so on. You, you can discover this during your uh, uh, medical school years and then probably internship, you start to evolve and you start to practice. And finally, discuss with friends, peers, role models, mentors, uh, all those are really excellent uh, resources. And today lecture is one of the resource you can uh, depend on. So try to be broad, prepare, the message here, prepare, prepare, prepare ahead of time. Uh, do not depend on one source of resources, go on different types and, and different perspective, try to build an, as much as accurate and clear picture of the specialty. So let's go back to the objectives of, uh, or the questions I received uh, from the uh, council. First, uh, two questions, do salaries differ between specialties? Yes, they differ for sure, uh, and sometimes can be, very uh, big difference, maybe even double uh, amount, but uh, nothing comes with uh, no price, nothing comes with no tax. You want to get more money, you have to put more effort, you have to put more uh, time in, uh, into work, more thinking, more uh, uh, time away from family, and, and so on. So uh, nothing without a price in life. What is the process of applying? This is more fits, I think, in the Saudi uh, uh, structure. So uh, Dr. Yazid Husseini gave me this uh, link to the uh, Saudi Council website where it talks about all the specialties and you can uh, uh, click on each one and tell you about some details about this specialty, the training, the requirements, uh, uh, length, uh, content, uh, and so on. And I think this book or booklet uh, from uh, the also Saudi Council is a very good resource. It was published uh, five years ago, but uh, also I have a PDF uh, copy uh, that Husseini sent it to me. If you're interested, probably can send it to uh, Brother Hamoud and he can uh, forward it to you. So uh, I think this is a good start uh, to read about. This is Western, so this is more uh, Saudi type, you can say, or, or Saudi perspective. This is a Western one, but if you're uh, aiming to even go abroad and, and, and uh, get your specialty, especially in North America, I think it's probably a good uh, book. It's a lengthy one, I think more than 200 pages, but ha has a lot of uh, pearls and, and, and tips. It's good to, to maybe uh, tackle uh, if you're interested. Next question, what can I do to increase my chances of getting accepted? The blue comments are my comments and the red one from Dr. Husseini. So I wrote strong CV. What do I mean by strong CV? 
of course, your GPA is important. Your research uh, studies is very important. Your electives important. Uh, your rotations, if you even went uh, abroad for elective in UK and uh, France and whatever country, it's important. If you get letter of recommendations uh, or uh, uh, referencing letters, I think it's a very important uh, point. Of course, this will not come without, again, a price. You have to show your best. You have to do your uh, best uh, uh, work. Uh, be on time, uh, punctual, attend lectures, uh, discuss, read, uh, take exams, and so on. All this uh, uh, will fit on your CV. So CV, curriculum vitae. This is your life story. And it's better to start from now writing your CV. Probably you, already, you guys had it when you started your medical school, but I almost always update my CV on a monthly basis. Any course I take any uh, even uh, webinar with uh, certificate, any uh, CME I, I do here and there, uh, any lecture I give, uh, any work that has a merit, add it. Uh, do not wait the last moment because you might forget. Try to update it frequently uh, and look at other people's CVs and ask books to how to write your CV. Uh, that will help you to, to build it up. Uh, there's a little difference between CV and resume. In medicine, they're almost the same. But uh, resume is usually very short, maximum two to three pages. Uh, talk a little bit more in details. And to my understanding, CV is used more in North America and uh, US and Canada. Resume is used more in Europe, especially UK. Uh, when I showed my CV to one of the uh, British uh, doctors here in the hospital, he said it's dry. So I realized what he meant. Dry meaning I'm just listing uh, my work, uh, my lecture, and so on. Doesn't give details about the type of work I've, uh, I've done. So resume, you go more in details. And just a word of advice, uh, I'm a, a member of LinkedIn, and it's really an uh, excellent place to go to uh, as a professional, LinkedIn. Uh, and they have uh, some free uh, uh, courses, talk about uh, lectures, maybe 10, 12 uh, minutes, how to write your CV or resume, uh, leadership uh, tips, uh, experiences, and so on. So try to build your also uh, LinkedIn profile. Uh, because this is, will, uh, will give you a chance to read other people's profiles, read other people's experiences, other people's achievements, uh, other people's uh, 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 stories, and so on. How you, how you impress them in an interview, I think that's very important. And we'll talk about it in a few moments. But a snapshot, how you behave as a professional during the interview, how you talk about who you are and why you have a fit for that program. Uh, Dr. Hassan, you mentioned about work on it early on. So that's an important point. I'll keep repeating over and over and over. Start practicing now, even as a medical student. Uh, envision yourself and that specialty. What they, uh, that specialty demand from you. Uh, read about it. Uh, uh, prepare yourself. Repetition is important. Talk to people. Uh, get exposure to uh, that specialty. Promote yourself in the program. So if you want to do internal medicine at KSU, it's, it's very good to do your, uh, uh, one of your internship uh, uh, rotation medicine and the uh, internal medicine where you can get the uh, best letter recommendation and, and the specialty you like. For example, people like nephrology, they come to us in the nephrology unit. So they can impress us. Uh, they can get letter of recommendation from us. And I've given almost 50 letters so far in the last seven years in this hospital, majority for students and interns. Uh, they impressed me by their work, so they deserve a letter, and I'll give it to them. And of course, behind the scene, I tell the program director, this person uh, is a good person, and he or she is uh, trying to apply for medicine, and I give them letter of recommendation. It happened two months ago, in time of corona. They did interview, I think virtual interview. The program director uh, of the medicine department called me and asked me about two students. I give them letter of recommendation just wants to hear one or two words. Do you really want this person to be in our program? If I say yes, he will go for it. So that's, uh, I think, good to build your uh, uh, connection, you can say, or network. And this is what they call it in the West connection, in the East, al -wasta. But there's a big dis uh, distinction between them. al -wasta, but I mean, wow, they say in here in the East, basically depends on, uh, uh, I know you, you're a good person, or just without, Evidence. In the West, connection meaning I know you based on evidence. If I did not work with you, I cannot give you my word. 
When I applied for, for a nephrology fellowship, I requested the letter of recommendation from the program director in medicine uh, when I was in US. He, he wrote clearly in his letter, I did not work with him. However, this is what I found in his file as a comment from the other consultants. And he quoted three, four comments about a good comment about me. And clearly he stated, because this is, uh, even in Islam, this is a witness, shahada. So if you know for sure, first-hand experience, mention it. If not, you should not. So how you deal with it? You as a person, you need to seek that opportunity. Try to uh, find that opportunity to uh, uh, get yourself engaged and you can say show off in a good way that you're a good person fit that specialty. Uh, another point, avoid being overconfident. This is back to the in interview. Talk about your achievements, talk about your strengths, your weaknesses, but not too much or too little. Not to be too confident, overconfident, or underconfident, or shaky. So be realistic, be truthful, be normal. Be yourself, as they say. And I added here tawfiq. All this, everything in life depends on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guidance. Depends on your action uh, in a time of easiness. It's a time of hardship. Allah will, will support you. So uh, this is we should not uh, uh, forget of. The next question, what are the requirements that they look for in candidates in terms of CV? Back to the CV. So academic achievement, GPA, SMLE exam. Uh, I think that's important uh, in Saudi Arabia. I don't know much about the, the, the uh, exam uh, scoring and so on, uh, but I've written some questions for SMLE uh, exam. So I think that's important because this is reflect the knowledge side of you, uh, of you who you are. There's knowledge, there's skill, and there's attitude. So the knowledge comes from these. And the uh, skills and attitude come in the interview, comes in the CV. Research and publications. I think those are very important. And I know uh, the Saudi Council encourages, or even I think demand, to have uh, uh, some kind of research study uh, in, in their pointing uh, system, and a scoring system for residency, which is excellent. But try to find, just a word of advice, try to find a good mentor who can teach your research uh, uh, to a point and uh, uh, have a good study, not just a very quick, weak one, doesn't have much merit. Uh, and uh, work on yourself. Uh, I know, I think, probably National Guard or, or, or Mental Health, they have summer courses for research, six weeks or so, crash courses or something like this. Try to do those one as much as possible. Research is not an easy task or an easy field, but some people, they have more skills than others or they like it more than the others. Uh, so try to improve yourself by doing courses, uh, uh, attending lectures, reading journal articles, reading journal clubs, uh, uh, review articles, try to, to, to improve your skills because this is important. Uh, and I have to admit, uh, our university case, university is basically research-based. For a promotion, for faculty, it's based on research more than other service, uh, clinical service or, or teaching uh, experience. So that's important, especially if you want to... Uh, to uh, uh, go to West uh, for further training, or if you want to join academic life, then you have to start building your research uh, career from now. Electives, I mentioned early, so those are important. I think you have two months elective in internship, if I remember right, uh, in Saudi Arabia. So we'll try to use this time to impress people and maybe take a little bit early so you can get experience, taste of which, spe which speci specialty uh, you like, the fresh to be maybe two or three specialty and so on. So that will help you uh, uh, and your decision, inshallah. Uh, next one, volunteer work. I put it here. I don't know much about it in Saudi Arabia, but I think some people are doing volunteer work. I see now in Corona, there's a group of volunteer guiding people in the uh, pharmacy. So that's very important. Uh, it's probably becoming more and more popular in Saudi Arabia. I see uh, of discussion with, uh, with people reading in the news. So uh, uh, that goes back who you are as a person. What's your goal in life? You want to serve uh, people? should be there on your CV. It's very important in the West and probably important to, uh, uh, or becoming important now in, in, uh, in the East. Uh, next point, strong desire in this particular specialty and center. So you have to impress them. Why you like this specialty and why you like them, why you apply to them. Uh, so that test question will come and we'll discuss it a little bit uh, later. So uh, you need to know about that uh, center. You need to study that center. Maybe uh, how many residents they have, what kind of teaching they do, how many uh, uh, hostels they have, or how many beds, uh, what kind of rotation, 
how many elective they give to their uh, trainees, research opportunities, teaching opportunities, and so on, sponsoring to go out west and all this. Uh, so you need to study, you need to show that you know about the center and you really uh, want them. Uh, so you have an interest in them. Being polite and cooperative. So being professional. Professionalism, professionalism, professionalism. It's very, very important. In Canada, if you, fi if you uh, fight with a person in the street, and that person report you because you, your misconduct, report you to the college of uh, physician, the one uh, issue you your uh, license, they might suspend your license. Might, you might go to, uh, into uh, uh, complaint and, and, and investigation. You have to be professional everywhere, not only at work, not, with, uh, not within or inside the hostel building, uh, medical city or whatever, everywhere you go. And this is a noble profession. We, we are the only, probably can say profession that carry the title doctor everywhere, whether at home, your neighbor, in the masjid, uh, airport, uh, wherever you go, they call you doctor, doctor, doctor. This has a price. You have to be professional. So some people, they might have some anger problem. Some might have some uh, uh, personality issues, uh, uh, so uh, aggressiveness and so on. You need to work on it. Uh, it takes time, it takes energy, but work on it. It's probably point of weaknesses, but if you work on it, it can become strength. And this can come even in the, the uh, interview. Uh, if you mention that this is my weak point and this is what I've done to make it, uh, to improve it, to get it better. Uh, the last uh, point, fulfilling the requirements of the Saudi Council, that's uh, making you confident and look definitely keen on the specialty. So again, back to the uh, scoring system, you have a, a Saudi Council. Uh, Try not to aim for the minimum. Look for always the maximum, top, because you're always not going to achieve, or most time not going to achieve top everything uh, 100%. But if you aim for aim high, you're going to achieve at least the minimum. Uh, and even if you don't achieve the, the, the maximum, but you show the effort in the interview that you try to get this and that uh, uh, point. Next question, how can I feel safe during the interview? How to prepare for interview? Some tips. Excellent uh, questions, but not an easy task how to do it. Uh, it's not uh, just a word of mouth. I can tell you to do this or do that. It needs practice, it needs to uh, uh, behave uh, part of your uh, habit. So that meaning, meaning you have to try it or practice it over and over and over to become part of you. So first one, preparation. Know about the program, the strengths of the program. Know about yourself, know about your CV. Know about the specialty you want. Know about your goals of, uh, of life, goals in the profession, and so on. Next point, uh, excellent English language. I put it here because I noticed uh, I've done a couple of interviews in our hospital here. And uh, I asked two questions to the candidate. Uh, the answer was very slow. And then the answer said, sorry, can you repeat your question? So I realized the language was a barrier here. Uh, that's very important. Uh, I have to tell you the truth. My second language from primary school to middle school was French, was not English. I learned English after high school uh, because I wanted to go to uh, US, so I have to learn English, I have to read literature and so on. We studied medicine Arabic, not in English or French. Uh, Syria and Sudan, the only two countries uh, that uh, teach medicine uh, in, in, in Arabic, sorry, in Arabic. So uh, it was not easy for me to switch from Arabic language to English language. Beside my second language was French. You might even hear I have some French accent a little bit uh, till now. So back to the point, English, English, English is very important. Uh, uh, IELTS, uh, TOEFL, whatever exams you want to, uh, or courses you want to uh, go to, do it. And th this will pay you a lot later on. Once you master it, it's lifelong skill. Uh, once you master it and use it, you will never lose it. So uh, I, I notice myself, my language gets a little bit weak when I come to Saudi Arabia, because we tend to speak in Arabic most of the time when talk to a patient in Arabic and so on. And I have to uh, also say the truth, so many accents and dialects in Saudi Arabia. You have a British, you have a, a little bit, uh, some Indian accent, you have some uh, Pakistani accent, Egyptian accent, my accent. So it's not a homogeneous uh, culture. That's what will affect uh, uh, you, your, your accent or your language, uh, consciously or unconsciously uh, even. 
So back to the point, focus on the language. Again, uh, you do it early, you have time, excellent. Once you start residency, it's not easy task. Once you have on-call and other commitments, do it early in your career. Third one, impressive personality. Again, personality, you were born with a lot of skills and qualities and uh, characteristics, but some of them are also acquired. So you need to work on it. That fits that specialty, especially. If you want to be an internist or nephrologist like me, you have to be patient enough and be deep enough in your thinking, but this sometimes can be on expense of forgetting other uh, skills. Uh, I know myself, sometimes I sound cool or cold in my emotion. I don't show emotion much. Uh, I have a lot of emotions inside, but I don't show them out. And that can affect uh, my patients, sometimes affect my colleagues, and even affect my uh, wife and so on. It's inside. This is my personality. This is my weak point. How I, I deal with it, I acknowledge it at least. And I, uh, uh, I have to say it clearly to the other people, that is my weak point. So take it easy with me. It's not intentional. So be yourself in the interview. Do not lie. Do not lie. Do not lie. Mention the truth. What you have done, say it. If you don't have any experience, you don't have any answer, say, sorry, I don't have any answer for this. That's a good point. And show that you have a plan or intention to uh, uh, acquire the skill or learn or read, whatever. So uh, be truthful. I think those are very important uh, because in our profession, we should have zero tolerance for lying. I have to mention that one student, uh, one intern was with me a few years ago. And uh, I remember first day in the rotation, I sat down with the resident uh, and the uh, interns and the uh, registrar at the time. And I, I give them rules of uh, to the game, I, I, if you will. So I mentioned, I'm a consultant. I'm responsible for this uh, ward. This is our work schedule. You come on this time. We'll do around at this time. This is our teaching. This is our on call. This is our uh, uh, job uh, description, you can say, our roles, and so on. And uh, clearly, I stated if you want to take vacation, I have no problem as long as you tell the registrar at least and the resident. If not me, the registrar. One intern disappeared for two full days. No word from him. You call, no answer. You page or bleep, no answer. Then he showed up the third day. First question, where were you? Oh, I had an interview. And my response, you did not tell us. I told you up front, you should tell us. Why? Because ultimately, I'm the, the, the uh, responsible first person for patient's life. Nurses kept uh, bleeping him for a whole two days, no answer, no answer. So that's delay the treatment. Patient might be at risk. Patient may be critical situation. Did they have to go to resident? Did they have to go to the uh, registrar? They, they reach me. So I take responsibility at the end. Those are patient lives. Yes, uh, he was an excellent person, but I almost failed him. Uh, after negotiation, barely let him pass the rotation. It was the last rotation in June, but I said, sorry, rules are rules. This is not professional. Another student, he worked with us in our unit a few years ago, and the consultant Give him excellent uh, evaluation. The internship office discovered this. They called him, say, this person did not even uh, come to work. He only came for three, four days and then disappeared. How did they know? I don't know. The registrar thought the, res the consultant knew about it. And the consultant did not ask the registrar. He just saw him a couple of times, did not pay attention that he wasn't there most of the time. This student disappeared for three weeks out of four weeks or a whole month preparing for USMLA exam. I don't care about his course. This is not professional. He lied. He did not tell anybody, did not say the truth. If he come to me and say, I'm going to take off, it's his uh, right, I will sign, say, uh, stay home, prepare for your exam, good luck, we will manage. But to do this way, deceptive way, this is not acceptable. Uh, and of course, if this happened in our program, this person would not be accepted anywhere because this will be in his record. Next point, how to add value question. This is my question. How are you going to add value to this program? Not all programs are alike. Internal medicine, a case few different. Internal medicine, King Faisal, different than a National Guard and so on. Each program has unique features. How are you going to add value to this program? That's why this is your job to discover 
that you have a good fit and you can add value. If, again, if you're more research oriented, maybe come to university. If you're more service oriented, maybe come to go to other, uh, uh, maybe Ministry of Health uh, hospital or, or residency training program. So uh, it goes back to what you want to achieve. Uh, professional connection, I mentioned earlier, WASTA, but again, based on merits, based on evidence. If you have this, do it. This is, uh, if, if, if I'm a program director and I have two excellent candidates, they're almost the same, but one person has connection to this uh, consultant, the other one has nothing. I would go to that consultant, ask him, you know this person very well? Yes, then I'll take him. Uh, so this is, can be sometimes the, 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 the uh, decision point for acceptance. Uh, we don't know what happens always behind the scene. Finally, again, from Dr. Hosseini, practice, 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 and imagine doing them. Imagine doing that uh, interview. Envision yourself, practice it. Practice in front of a mirror. Uh, practice it with your uh, family or your friend. Uh, give him the list of the questions, let him ask his questions, and then answer them back. The more you do it, the more you get good, good at it. The more you be easy to answer those uh, uh, questions and, and so on. Even uh, control your anxiety control your, your, your uh, uh, or choose your, your best words and so on. Be positive. So uh, even I will mention a few uh, slides later, they might uh, ask a question to intimidate you, to trigger you. This can be sometimes on purpose to see how much tolerance you have, what's your uh, uh, anger reaction, what's your stress uh, uh, management uh, tool and so on. So uh, try to be positive, positive attitude. Even if you discover this program is not good for you during the interview, do not dis uh, uh, just uh, discard them out completely. Learn from this interview. Learn from, again, as I mentioned earlier, so if you see the other side, you can really be strong in your uh, uh, decision or your uh, uh, opinion about uh, other programs and so on. This uh, uh, can say initiative, they call uh, themselves Guide to Residency, and they have a PDF. Uh, they produced, uh, I think, 14 pages, and I will go through uh, most of them uh, soon. Uh, they have some YouTubes, I think, uh, Twitter, email. You can call them. Group of uh, residents who went through residency and interviews and produced this uh, guidebook about interviews. Uh, those are the three uh, main authors, but they have also a list of other residents contributed to, to their experience. That's an excellent. This is only a couple of years uh, old. Uh, so, uh, and this is important because this is more Saudi perspective, residency programs in Saudi Arabia. So they go through the, the interview as uh, three stages or three phases, before interview, during, and after. And I'll go through some of those uh, points uh, quickly. First point, over and over, over. Preparation, preparation, preparation. Be professional, answer their call, prepare your paper ahead of time. He even mentioned, they mentioned four copies, your CV, transcript, recommendation letters, your uh, uh, certificates, SMLE, research, and all this. So have evidence to show uh, uh, your achievements. Uh, personally, be a, sleep well, eat well, come early, uh, know that where we have to park, uh, know the traffic, uh, timing and all this. So be on time, uh, be professional, dress well, uh, dress professional, uh, and practice, practice, practice the interview uh, over and over again, multiple times, not one time, multiple times. Uh, your first interview will not be perfect. That's normal. So sometimes even if you have a choice, choose your maybe best uh, program to middle or late uh, course of your interviews, if you have a choice. Do maybe the weak program in the beginning, so at least you can make mistakes and learn from them. Uh, this is life. We cannot be perfect in the first or second round of, of uh, uh, actions. Uh, and again, you talk about benefit from your interviews. So do self-reflection, self-assessment before and self-reflection after. What was the, uh, the question I heard or I was asked? Uh, how did I answer it? What is the best way to answer it if I, I was asked this question again? Uh, maybe you, you forgot some point, uh, uh, you missed some uh, important uh, issues. Here's talk about red flags, uh, about the programs. Uh, so those important points to think about, and we'll, we'll mention some point in the end, uh, inshallah. Then here they talk about uh, the, uh, during the interview. So I skipped the second page, there's a, th a third page. So common question, talk about yourself, who you are. 
tell me about yourself. How old are you? Where you were born, raised, achievements, high school, why you chose medical school, uh, why you uh, uh, chose this specialty, why you chose us, uh, what's your goal? Just very quick, brief uh, comments because they might build on those points. Every answer you give might be the uh, point of the next question. So uh, prepare yourself uh, in advance. Why the specialty? So uh, again, talk about uh, why you're interested in this specialty. Why not uh, the other one? When I applied for residency in the US, I uh, sent my application for internal medicine, but I also thought about MedPed, med medicine pediatrics. They have this program of four years, two years medicine, two years pediatric. I thought this may be a good uh, uh, choice. And I received only one interview, and I, I went to, into it. But after the interview, I changed my mind. I don't think I'll be able to do pediatric. Uh, again, as a knowledge, studying pediatric, pediatrics was excellent. Again, similar to medicine, but a different perspective, age group, and some different diseases. But in practice, I get frozen when I hear uh, a kid crying. I cannot function for probably thir uh, uh, first three years of age. I cannot function, especially if you ask question and no answer. I cannot, so I changed my mind. Pediatric is not uh, uh, my interest. Knowledge, yes, but practice is not. Um, product, I, might, I might say that I don't like or I hate ob -GYN. When I studied, it was excellent. Practice it is not my personality, it does not fit me. I would rather quit medicine than do ob -GYN. But it does not mean it's a bad specialty. We needed it. Again, this is my comment, my perspective. My experience, not, uh, it doesn't fit everyone. Can you talk about why the city, if you apply different cities, why uh, the center, so you need to know the strengths of the center, you need to know about uh, what other residents, so talk to the residents in that center ahead of time, get their strengths, uh, research, teaching, uh, electives, uh, whatever. Then they come to a really uh, uh, difficult questions, personal questions. Uh, yes, talk about life, uh, marriage and, and kids and so on, they need to know your future, does it affect your training or not? Uh, uh, I remember when I interviewed a secretary in, in, in Canada, I have two uh, candidates very close. One has a, a degree even in medical practice uh, management. And she went to, uh, got a diploma, how to really run a doctor's office, and was young. The other one was older, has no degree in, in medical uh, office uh, management, but has uh, excellent experience in customer service. I chose the other one, the older one, because she's not going to get a, uh, more kids uh, to hire somebody as a private practice. She gets maternity. She needs 12 months maternity leave. I have to find somebody else, a replacement. It's a hassle. And uh, the other point, uh, the older one was living in a city. The, other, the first one uh, who has a degree was living outside. She has to drive uh, uh, 40 minutes to come to work. And you know, Canada full of uh, snowing season. I said, this is not practical. If she gets uh, stuck in a snow storm and the practice has to run, somebody has to be uh, on time at work. So different, uh, this is personal questions you'll be asked about how they're gonna affect your uh, uh, training and, and uh, whatnot. Then uh, they're talking about uh, 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 leadership skills. That's very important. I mentioned earlier about work on yourself. Uh, uh, if you, uh, if you were in a leadership position, like uh, Brother Hamoud, he's in, in, the, in the student council. That's an excellent experience as a leader person. I know in our third year group, they have a group uh, for the 341, and they have a leader. That's a uh, leadership experience. Uh, that's excellent. What did you learn about it? What did you uh, uh, do in a difficult situations, uh, uh, time of conflict, uh, challenges, uh, stress, dealing with some weak or lazy student and so on. Uh, try to organize the timing between the student and, and the consultant for a meeting for a lecture and so on. All those are leadership skills, excellent. Uh, some people are leader by birth, but those are minority. Majority are leader by skills, by learning. So leadership is a learning uh, pathway. Same way or learning journey, same way as in medicine. Uh, not every doctor is a good leader. You might be an excellent doctor, but you can be a poor or very bad leader. If you're excellent in medicine, doesn't mean you're, you excel in every field of life. So leadership really is important uh, uh, to uh, work on it and read about it. Uh, now I'll show you a couple uh, uh, points later, inshallah. Uh, other point here, talk about 
why we should accept you on this program, what stimulates you to be creative, what stimulates you to be the best. So again, challenges. For me, I can do the, my best if I'm under stress, but to a point. I cannot be really on call for three days in a row, for example. I will not be able to do it. Uh, when I was young, I'm not that young anymore, I was able to do call seven, eight days a month, even including ICU. Nowadays, I'm almost 50, I cannot do it. So it depends on your age and your tolerance and your personality and your uh, circumstances. Uh, married people with very young kids might really mind uh, being on call so often away from family, uh, especially if they are in a city away from their extended family and there's no support to their immediate family, to their wife and kids, except them. That's an important. If you go abroad, for example, go to US or Canada, you're alone there. Uh, and you have very young kids, how are you going to manage if you have situation, uh, family uh, crisis or so on? Uh, talk about here, what did you learn from being an intern? That's an excellent question. Again, internship is a bridge between student uh, time and resident time. So it's a bridge. It's uh, uh, some knowledge, but more practice, more skills, more learning more about not to treat the patient as a management plan, but treat the patient as a case in the uh, work environment. How you handle your uh, competing interest. You have to see the patient. You have to write notes. You have to arrange uh, uh, procedures or investigation, call for consultation, attend lectures, uh, apply for residency, uh, continue your research projects. That's a lot of, of uh, multitask management. Uh, and this is an experience. What did you learn about it? Uh, I have a couple of books about the, uh, internship. It's good to read about them ahead of time, before you even start your internship. I always advise uh, a fifth year student, if you want to do medicine training in, in the future, uh, in the summer uh, vacation, when you finish your uh, student uh, time, uh, sorry, an internship time or residency, you have three months usually, from July till October. What are you going to do about those three months? This is a big gap. You can sit down and read uh, Davidson cover to cover in three months. If you really have a commitment and, and patience, you can read it all. And this will give you a lot of information, a lot of guidance in the future. You build the, 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 the basic, you, you build the base. Uh, and I'll mention my experience in, in a few moments, inshallah. Uh, next question, what is the hardest decision you've ever made? Changing your uh, uh, city, leaving family, going abroad, uh, uh, going to a city where the training is away from your extended family, being a single person and don't know how to cook and you have to live by yourself and be on call and look after laundry, all this, uh, especially you go to the West, you don't have a maid there at home. So you have to do everything. You have to manage that. So that's a part of the uh, experience you're going to get in life. And I always say every year, you say that it is really difficult year and the previous year is much easier easier. Uh, so the more you progress in life, the more you find your responsibilities increase and your challenges increase. And the previous year is a piece of cake. This is life, the life experience. That's why you become old, become a wise person, and you lose your hair like me if you are a male person. Uh, next uh, question about specialty and the center. Again, why you chose this specialty, why you chose them, how you can improve. What, this is what I meant by early adding value to that program. Uh, what is a specialty you want to achieve or, or pursue after medicine, for example, uh, diabetology, uh, rheumatology, ICU, and so on? Uh, do you have any plan to go out west? Uh, because they can think about you might leave them early or you need sponsorship and so on. But also can reflect if you're a dedicated person, you're studying hard, you want to pass US Med exam or the uh, MCC exams and so on. That's uh, give you some uh, uh, valid uh, point about that person's commitment to knowledge and, and uh, patience and, and goals and life and plan uh, in, in his life. Where did you uh, take your electives? So if it's in their hospital, other hospitals, why not their hospital? So you need to prepare for those uh, questions. Uh, where, uh, why were your marks high in that specialty compared to other specialties? Well, what made you, uh, uh, what made that specialty appealing to you or attractive to you? Uh, and I'll mention, why I changed from cardiology to nephrology uh, later. Uh, he took on military, this is for male. Uh, 
sometimes you might get some medical questions. When I did the interview for MedPed, I was asked about uh, uh, asthmatic, uh, status asthmaticus uh, case or, or di the diagnosis criteria. This is rare. It's only one out of 16 interviews I had medical questions. Some, they like to ask to see uh, exams. You have multiple choice. The answer is in front of you. But during the interview, you have no answers. So you have to, make, you have to compile it in your mind and say it. So they might be testing your, your knowledge and your capacity or your skills, how to think and put it together and say it. And probably at the same time, testing your English language. Here also important section, talking about difficult situation questions. Time of stress, how you balance uh, the stressful call, how you balance uh, post-call. Uh, your post-call and you have 11 patients to follow, how you can manage that. Uh, you have a sick person at home, a sick kid or, or a parent and you, you don't call, what are you gonna do? You're gonna call your, your senior, you're gonna take off, or you're gonna just leave as that intern left for interview without even notifying us. So those are uh, uh, important questions. Uh, and the way you answer them, especially if you're, uh, you answer them with spontaneity, so without thinking deeply, this will reflect your, your actions. You cannot hide. Uh, those are real uh, cases. If you make it up, it will be uh, discovered, it will be known. So uh, do not make it up, do not fake it. Say uh, the truth again, be truthful and say the reality, discover reality. He talk about a uh, woman, talk about colleagues, how you deal with colleagues, how you, how you work in a team. And this back to the internship. Internship, how you deal with a team. Internship has some hierarchy, consultant, fellow, registrar, senior resident, junior resident, interns, uh, students, and they have other uh, uh, pharmacists, uh, social worker, resident, or uh, trainees, and other specialties, uh, uh, and uh, rotation, sometimes family medicine rotating in medicine, family, some medicine resident rotating in medicine. So all those uh, different uh, uh, group of people with different interests, different goals, different uh, ideas, how you work in a, in a team. And I'll mention a couple points later today. So you need to learn how to uh, manage yourself in, uh, in the uh, work uh, environment. The medical school would teach you about knowledge mainly and skills of practicing medicine, but does not teach you about the skills of running the practice of the business of medicine. Business of medicine is different skills, different arena. You need to know uh, those skills and read about them. When I finished my residency, I went to Canada, my first job, they gave me an office. It's an empty office. The hospital gave me this office, say, you furnish it, you hire a secretary, you run it. I had no clue what to do. So I have to get a goddess from a close friend uh, and even help me in interviewing for a, a secretary and buying a computer, uh, buying the software for billing. Uh, I learned a lot about uh, running practice, going, uh, buying supplies, uh, uh, how you communicate was uh, uh, GP's office, a referral. It's not an easy task. This is called business of medicine. CMA, the Canadian Medical Association, they have written 15 articles about how to run a practice. So try to read about them. Sooner or later, you're gonna be in a practice, whether private practice, private uh, hospital, government hospital, teaching hospital, rural hospital, uh, big hospital, small one. You, it's different culture, different atmosphere, different demand, demands, different uh, needs. Uh, hobbies, experiences. Uh, so they're gonna ask you what you do in your spare time for me. Reading, 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 reading. I love reading. Reading about medicine, reading outside medicine. So they might ask you those questions because it can affect what kind of person you are. Uh, when I was a resident, at that time I used to have very uh, thick uh, hair. Uh, the consultant would come next morning and ask me, I'm a turnaround. She would look at my uh, uh, head in the back. If the hair is uh, uh, up, collected together, she would know that uh, I had very easy call because she knew I would read in the on call room on my back uh, on the bed. So the hair will all be compressed, just uh, collected on the top. If my hair was looks nice, then she would know I had very hard time because I could not see the bed. I was running in the hostel, seeing patient after patient. So that's a, 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 habit, a habit or a hobby that I was known about uh, reading person. Uh, do you, did you travel abroad? This is uh, an experience. Uh, good to really uh, go abroad a month, two months for elective. I went to UK before I went to US uh, for three months. That's changed uh, uh, my perspective big time. I did the vascular surgery, OB-GYN, pediatric, uh, respirology. 
uh, four uh, specialties in, in three months. And that's gave me a lot of perspective. I mentioned earlier, I would not do ob -GYN. I experienced ob -GYN in Syria and I experienced ob -GYN in the West. Different healthcare systems, yes, more care and more uh, knowledge and more uh, skills and more technology in the West, but does not fit my personality. Beside this, going abroad showed your personality, give you leadership skills, how you manage yourself alone, how you manage your finances, how you manage your uh, personal life. Uh, there's a saying in Syria, traveling one time better than reading one book uh, because it's a real life first-hand experience. Uh, so uh, to go abroad for a trip, especially for a professional trip for uh, transportation, that's really a, a good source of experience. Plus, you explore the healthcare system there, you explore their training programs, their uh, for me, UK training is not my, my choice. Uh, I have opinion because you have to do training every six months in different hostel. You do medicine for three years, you go to six hospitals. To me, it's not, there's no stability. I prefer to stay in one place and, and know that place so I can uh, produce uh, more or, or get better uh, experience in that place. But this is the, the UK system. Some people like it, some people don't. Then after interview, again, reflect about that uh, interview and learn from it. This is an excellent list of mistakes, and I will read them all because it's a really important uh, list. I think uh, I really uh, appreciate uh, their effort to put it together. Arriving late, this uh, showed uh, professionalism. So uh, try to come early, do not be on call that day or don't even be uh, working that day. Try to take off ahead of time and go early, especially in Riyadh, you have to know about the, the uh, traffic jam. So leave early. If I have a lecture at eight o'clock, I'll probably be, arrive at 6.30. Uh, better be early and wait there and relax than be late and stress, then your interview will be uh, probably ruined. Dressing inappropriately, so that's important. Uh, not smiling, so body language. Body language is very important because 37% uh, of communication are words. Only 37, one third. The rest are body language. So here they have not smiling, they have chewing gum, they have uh, I think eye contact. Those are body language. I remember about chewing gum an incident when I have a student who were uh, doing bedside uh, teaching session, taking history. And once there was chewing gum, I told him clearly, this is not professional, chew gum in front of the patient. Another student was drinking coffee. This is not appropriate. You hear respecting the patient uh, 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 presence. So uh, this same way in the interview. Weak uh, handshake, especially for males. So be careful about this one uh, because this give a uh, uh, message how strong and you're uh, and willing to uh, come to this program. Uh, sitting inappropriately. I remember also one student uh, even crossed the leg in front of the patient. Uh, this is not uh, professional. Or standing and lifting the patient hand during the exam and pulling on the patient's uh, shoulders. This is not professional. So you need to know. Uh, so Every situation has its own code, you can say, a culture code. Appearing bored or uninterested. So that's important. Maybe uh, your words are good, but your uh, action or your attitude, the tone of the words, uh, the sentence you mentioned, the way you answer the, that question, uh, uh, give a message that you're not interested. Restlessness. Uh, sometimes interview can take maybe, I don't know, in Saudi Arabia, but in the West can take the whole day. Uh, interview, even sometimes they can take you for a meal. They want to see how you behave socially. Hesitance uh, in answers. If you don't know, say, I don't know. Yes, it's good to have a pause of two, three seconds to think, but if you don't know, say, I don't know. Don't just try to make it up or, or go around uh, without clear uh, answer. I learned this in the West. Uh, I had, uh, can say, bad experience myself. Even one consultant told me, are you a politician? Because I could not answer the uh, question easily, so I went around it, around it, around it. He told me, are you a politician? I said, I'm not. So uh, they like to be clear down to the point. Crossing arms, same way, crossing legs, the professional uh, uh, posture of the body, interruption. So wait, even if there's some conflict or disagreement, wait till it uh, finishes. This is not only interview everywhere, even with patients. And I remember one resident went under uh, probation when I was a third year resident. He was third year, just two months to finish and go for American board exam. He went to enter, uh, uh, into probation because he yelled at the patient, screamed at the patient. Was, this was reported directly from the nurse to the program director. Uh, weak voice. This goes back to being confident. 
practice, practice, and reality, truthfulness. Uh, switching or swinging the chair, not knowing the center well. So again, preparation, preparation, preparation. Talking too much or too, uh, not enough. I talk a lot, I know myself, I, but luckily I have two hours today, so inshallah I'll finish soon. Playing with hair, uh, lack of humor, getting angry. Again, some questions might intimidate you purposefully. Showing, uh, showing off. So er this goes er uh, show the arrogance. Again, be yourself, realistic. Do something good, something excellent, show it, say it, but not with too much self pride. Uh, talking bad about previous interviews or colleagues, be careful. That's an important uh, point. After the interview, think about that interview, what you learn from it. In the West, we tend to send a thank you uh, note, especially uh, the top few programs you're going to list on your uh, matching list. Uh, and here they're talking uh, about be careful, don't talk about one program, even if you don't like it, because this might go to the other good program you think about. Uh, there's always a connection uh, between, uh, you can say, people uh, transferring uh, information between programs. So uh, I will uh, conclude with my personal journey quickly. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I went to medical school in Aleppo and Syria. It was not my first choice, though, but we have the cultural uh, habit. You go to the school that's based on your scores in high school exam. I scored high. The medical school was number one. I went uh, into the medical school. My father, my father and mother both are uh, civil engineering. My father wanted me to go to civil engineering, but my uncle said no. He scored high. He don't know if his brother would not or would, would score high later on. So he has to go to medical school. Luckily, I liked it. But uh, retrospectively, uh, it would be bad if I did not like it. And I think there are a few cases every medical school. Some people really go to medical school and then they don't like it. Best to stop and change the profession early. Don't wait because this will affect, this is your career. This is your whole life uh, profession. Then uh, I mentioned earlier, we learned uh, medicine in Arabic. My second language was French. So I started right away after high school learning English. I was jealous at my uh, colleagues. They're reading references in English. I could not read English. I took many courses. I even studied TOEFL myself at home. I took, I think, four or five courses. And I started to become more uh, better in language. I spent six hours one night to translate one page of pathology uh, book. I remember that. So what I mentioned early, uh, great effort ahead of time or early will have a fruit later on. But that's, I never regret that. Then I prepared for yes one exam. Uh, I sat home for two and a half years to prepare for reassignment exam. Step one, 15 months. Step two, 12 months. Uh, just staying home whole time uh, from up, uh, sunset to sunrise. Uh, to, I'm sorry, from sunrise to sunset. From morning to evening, just reading about ESML E. I need to understand medicine in, in English and get better knowledge. We did not have uh, uh, behavioral science. We did not have immunology. We did not have genetic. Uh, uh, in our medical school, so many lacking uh, content, but ESMLE is important. A lot of my colleagues or friends told me I, I went so broad. Uh, it's not uh, needed for ESMLE. You can pass easily with good score if you just study less number of books. I said, no, I want to build my base. This is my life career, and I will bid on it later on. Uh, for medicine, for example, I read the whole book similar to Davidson, 1,040 uh, pages, whole book cover to cover for internal medicine. And I found the, the, the fruits when I did my residency training later on. I have the knowledge. Then after this, I did six months uh, training while waiting for residency in, in uh, Syria and waiting for residency in US. I worked in a private hospital, giving a lot of uh, experience. I worked in ICU and CCU and uh, cardiology as a, just what they call the house physician, basically as an intern job. Uh, I got yelled at from a, a big consultant cardiologist for somebody else mistake, but I have to suck it and tolerate it. He even gave me a, a, a comment, you have a rust on your brain, I want to clean it before you go to US. I have a rust on my brain, that's what he thought. I have to be patient and, and alhamdulillah, I, I passed that stressful time, but uh, with experience. And he gave me a hundred letter of recommendations, that doctor, because he felt I did a great job. So again, this is the connection. Hundred letter of recommendations he, get, he wrote for me, for hundred uh, applications I submitted and I got 16 interviews. So I went to US, I had 16, uh, 20, 19 interviews, I went to 16 of them, 
and alhamdulillah, I was matched in the first uh, uh, choice. Uh, but of course, this is not my own effort, my pa family efforts, uh, my friends' efforts. We have to ask about programs here and there, get other people experiences. Uh, you are guys lucky nowadays because you have a lot of resources. Our time did not have resources, no internet, books, very little here and there. We used to photocopy books or buy them from even uh, Beirut. We didn't have all the resources you guys have nowadays. So uh, try to take advantage of the uh, uh, luxury you have now here. Alhamdulillah, I got into a residency. I had very difficult time for six months. My language was very bad, French accent. I had to repeat myself on the phone to the nurses many times to understand me. But for over six months, I changed hand degree as my uh, colleagues told me because I was so attentive, uh, looking to details. My first rotation, the medical student evaluated me, say that I did not teach them. I did not know how to teach them. I didn't know what to teach. I, I'm learning from them how to write my notes not vice versa, but I changed quickly and I learned from it. And as I mentioned early, I applied for fellowship in my mid middle of my first year, not second year. Uh, I mentioned early, I did CC rotation in September. We started in July, September CC rotation. I hated cardiology. I hated it. So I started to think what I want to do. This is my uh, fellowship. I will not stop at medicine. I want to do more than medicine, subspecialty. Then luckily I did ICU in, in uh, December. I liked it because I liked acid base, electrolyte, fluid management, swan gans at the time, uh, ventilator management, very complex cases. Uh, it was Ramadan the whole month and I was on call every third day and I did medical ICU. I liked it. Then after this, January came and I was supposed to do ENT two weeks uh, elective just to learn how to do intubation. This is what my friend told me to choose. But uh, the, the, the uh, department apologized to accept me. So what option I had? Two weeks in nephrology. I hated nephrology before I went to US. I said, okay, I'll do it two weeks, I'll manage. First day, I went in, consultant changed my mind upside down. He was so uh, easy to deal with, so knowledgeable, wants to teach us. He took us for an hour to teach us about acid base, details, basic. I sat down as a resident, was a medical student, to learn about acid base. I, I loved it. I went ahead and bought a couple books about acid base, blood gas, uh, uh, renal pathology, and so on. And then, uh, after two weeks, I was discussing with my friend uh, who was from Egypt and told me why not do nephrology. This clicked in my mind. I talked to that consultant who was even the uh, division head and he asked me, you can apply now. We have opening by the time you graduate. I applied and he accepted me without even interview because he worked with me for two weeks. So as I mentioned early, I hated nephrology in Syria because the, the teacher was bad. I loved it in US because the teacher was excellent. Cardiology, I loved it in, in Syria because I worked with cardiologists, but when I practice it, uh, first-hand experience, I did not like it in the US. So I changed my mind. Probably I'm not one uh, part of those, uh, one quarter or one third of the uh, doctors would change their mind. And I, I became a nephrologist. Then I can tell you about uh, uh, geriatric. I'm a geriatrician. So when I was uh, in my fellowship, 9-11 happened and I was uh, Syrian with passport, uh, G1 visa, a lot of issues uh, facing us. I didn't want to go back to Syria. I wanted to stay in the US. Uh, I had to do a waiver. It's a long process, legal process. So I have to stay one more year legally. And that uh, division chief, uh, his wife is a doctor and she's in the family medicine department in our hospital. And they have, uh, or they, st they still have uh, uh, geriatric medicine training. So she got me into geriatric medicine fellowship for one year while I was trying to apply to become a faculty in that university. They wanted me to, be, to stay as a nephrologist and geriatrician. I applied, but uh, unfortunately, I didn't get it through. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alameen. So during that year, I worked with family medicine. I changed my mind about family medicine. Initially, I used to think of superficial people, very broad, not caring. They're not thinking deeply. They just uh, go quickly uh, uh, through the uh, patient's encounter and just fix superficial issues. But I changed my mind. I worked with uh, family medicine people. This program was number three in US in family medicine training. Uh, and my geriatrician or geriatric uh, uh, mentor was the program director of the res family medicine residency. So I learned a lot from him. Till now, I still connect with him and I visit him in US. So again, the first hand experience uh, is different than what you hear. What you hear, take it, has a merit, but not 100% accurate. Then, uh, uh, the American board exam, uh, I went through it. 
uh, it's not an easy task, but of course, what I have read in the USMLE helped me in uh, American board. Each exam has, has skills. You need to learn how to deal with it. Each exam has different types of questions and timing and number of questions and durations and so on. You need to know this. The knowledge, once you start medical school, will continue till the end of your life. Uh, then when I went to Canada, my first job, I had to take the Royal College exam. I did not pass the first time because I went like this without preparation. So this back to the point, preparation, preparation, preparation. Next year, I passed the medicine and I passed nephrology within three months, both written and oral exam and everything. So this back to the point of preparation. You need to know that place. You need to know. Uh, we have saying in Arabic, so you need to know where you are. Know your situation. Uh, you have to have situation awareness. That program, that uh, uh, hospital in that city, whatever, that country, you need to know uh, about them ahead of time so you can prepare and uh, prepare your answers for the questions and uh, prepare yourself. Do you have a fit or not? And I mentioned earlier about the CV resume and the difference between them. So I try to uh, uh, build it uh, on time. My first work in Canada was in a rural hospital for nine years, internist nephrologist, a lot of experience. Coming here to Saudi Arabia, it's academic center, different. A thousand beds hospital in Canada was 85 beds, big difference. Five and a half million city, 7,500 people in the small town in, in Canada. Uh, teaching here, 40% of my time is teaching, teaching students, residents, fellows, even uh, pharmacy residents, and, and uh, doing research more here. Uh, so different perspective, different life, different demand uh, fits you. I love teaching. That's why I became faculty. I had the option to join a SIF operation, but I chose faculty because I like to do teaching. Even the salary is much less than uh, the SIF operation, but I want to become a faculty. It, it's prestige in one way, but also self-fulfilling uh, other way. So here are my uh, list of a uh, few points uh, that I mentioned early, uh, quickly about personal development, professional development. You have to improve yourself. Medical schools teach you about medical knowledge and skills of practicing medicine with a patient direct contact and comfort with the patient, but does not teach you the business of medicine, does not teach you about uh, uh, working in the hospital, working in the clinic, working in the uh, ICU, working in the uh, world, uh, working with in teams, uh, being a, a division head, a director. All this uh, are not taught in, in medical school. So that's uh, uh, important to learn about. So I have a few steps here. Team model, so many books about it. Dysfunction of a team, I like this. Uh, there's a whole book about it. Uh, it's a, a, a tale, a story, fake story, but uh, it's important to uh, read about. Conflict model, this will come into the interview, how we can uh, reach a win-win situation. There's a win-lose, lose-win, uh, there's halfway. Uh, but how you reach collaboration and both winning, this is a task. There are so many, I read the whole book, I think 16 models of uh, uh, conflict resolution or management. It's uh, important to read about them. You, you are not going to really master them all, but at least you, you have some skills, you have some knowledge, and you try to apply. This is a, a matter of trial and error, and you learn from it. Trust model, there's a whole uh, model about trust, A, B, C, D model called leadership management. I mentioned earlier about Leadership visionary, looking for future, management, day, doing daily, daily work, day-to-day -day, uh, uh, job. So you manage your day, you manage your practice, you manage your on-call, you manage your training, but also you, you're a leader. Uh, sooner or later, you become a leader in the hospital. We are a leader for patients' life, leader of our family, leader in the community. So those are skills you need to read about and go through courses. I've taken more than 14 courses of leadership in, in Canada. Uh, I still can now do online. I have, uh, I've done so far, I think, six, seven this year uh, during the corona time, Zoom or online. You do a lot of uh, uh, leadership. Uh, one of the points to learn about mission, vision, objectives. This is important, yes, on the organizational level, on the level of uh, uh, companies, but also important on the personal level. What's your mission of life? What's your vision in life? What do you want to achieve in 10 years, 20 years, and so on? What are your objectives? How you break this down? This will take us to the put your dream to the test. I will mention in the next slide uh, about WordPress disk profile. I will show you my profile I just did a couple of months ago. Professional can meds. This is the residency training in Saudi Arabia based on can meds. Undergrad, Saudi meds, but uh, postgrad can meds. Read about it. It's research based, evidence based, more than 15 years of evidence uh, of uh, uh, research to back it up. And that's why we uh, 145 uh, assessment for a resident or fellows based on can meds. 
uh, 25 points based on uh, seven roles uh, as a doctor, collaborator, communicator, role, uh, uh, health advocate, uh, and so on. Plus taxonomy, this is about knowledge, how you acquire knowledge, level of uh, understanding, comprehension, analysis, and so on. This will help you in exam, help you in decision uh, analysis, decision making. Minus permit, this will help you about how you learn a skill, break it down to pieces and so on. This is important in your training. And so, and so more and more. This is just a quick snapshot what uh, came to my mind. So if you go to the, this one, put your dream to the test. This was my first encounter with uh, 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 personal development. When I was in Canada, one of the uh, Islamic Center had this, had this as a CD, three CDs. Uh, each CD, uh, uh, one hour uh, uh, reading of the uh, uh, written uh, book. So you can buy it as written uh, as a book, or you can buy it, uh, you can listen to it. I listened to it three times. It's an excellent uh, uh, book, talks about 10 questions, and this is also fits. Uh, if you have a dream, how you can get it real? How you can really uh, execute a dream and, and achieve it? So talk about question of reality, question of ownership. Reality can be achievable or not. Ownership, is it your dream, somebody else's dream? Uh, clarity, can you really define it? Uh, in, in clear terms, uh, what it, uh, you mean by this dream? Become an ophthalmologist, become a medical director, become a, a, a minister, whatever. Uh, pathway, you have really a structure how to achieve it. People, you have people to help you. It's, you cannot achieve your dream by yourself. Passion, you think about the dream day and night. Every time, every day you wake up in the morning, you think about it. Tenacity, uh, pa uh, patience and dedication. A uh, question of uh, uh, Cost, time, uh, effort, uh, life, money, and so on. The, uh, question number nine about uh, uh, what, uh, fulfillment. And so if you achieve it, you feel so good about it. And last question, uh, question of significance. Does it affect other people's life? Does it have an impact on other people, on patients, on society, on a nation, and so on? So read about it. That's another one I have it on my list. I haven't read yet. Uh, developing the, the qualities of a leader and so on. John Maxwell, I, I buy all his books. Uh, he used to be a priest, but uh, he's uh, he written so much the last 25 or 30 years in, in about leadership. He was a priest and a leader of, of a big uh, church in the US and then become a leader and coach and so on. Uh, this is the, the profile about who you are. We mentioned earlier Briggs Meyer uh, uh, profile. This, this is the most common one recently, talk about uh, uh, four point. And guess what? This is my uh, assessment. I did it just uh, in March, a few days before lockdown of Corona. I'm mainly C and D. So I have to work on INS. INS meaning influence and steadiness. I'm more analytical person, systematic. Uh, sometimes I can be forceful. I know myself sometimes uh, in my argument and so on but I have to think about this part. This is my strengths, this is my weakness. I acknowledge it, I know about it, I have to work on it. They say in the West, spend 80% of your time and effort on your strengths, not weaknesses. 80% on your strengths, so you can become an excellent, uh, uh, reach excellent level, you can excel at, uh, at it. But uh, spend 20% of your time on your weaknesses, so you become competent, the least acceptable level. So uh, if it's below the acceptable level, you work on it to become acceptable level. And uh, I'll conclude here by thanking again uh, the uh, Student Council Future Pathway for inviting me. This is my email. Uh, this is not my uh, Twitter. Stay away from Twitter. This is why I wrote here because I know most of the are busy and obsessed with Twitter. Stay away from it. This would take a lot of your precious time from medicine and, and uh, professional and personal development. Do not get indulged. Just be wise how to use the technology. And uh, I thank you very much uh, for uh, listening. Uh, and I appreciate if you can uh, do the evaluation form for this lecture, whether clicking on the uh, link or if you have your uh, phone, you can scan it and, and uh, do it uh, in a few minutes. And I think I'll stop inshallah ta'ala and we'll do the uh, questions. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Ahmed. Uh, this was an amazing lecture. Um, so for the questions and answers, you can uh, either uh, read it from the Q&A box, uh, if you click on Q&A uh, below, yes. or I can read it to you. 
which one if I think I can read them that's okay they have uh, okay so the first one the CV can I add the webinars research or extracurricular activities I've done but haven't received a certificate for uh, yes you can research be careful research has to be published at least uh, in, in the abstract form conference the poster yes you can put it but just uh, sharing you can put it as not as a research study full research study but as an experience other experience i was involved with the research then you can just specify why you did uh, that uh, project but also can maybe explain why you did not continue with them maybe it's taking so much time or the project did not continue to the end they stopped for some reason but you learned from it so this is an experience you can mention it this is for research webinars uh, if it's a lecture uh, uh, I would say in the beginning of your career, when you have very short CV, you can put it there. But be prepared to answer the question about this webinar. They might ask you, so what did you learn about this webinar? What's uh, uh, the benefit of this webinar? Other activities uh, I mentioned early depends on situation. I used to put my work for six months in a private hostel in uh, Syria. But nowadays, I removed it because uh, it's not uh, pertinent any, any moment or anymore. So uh, if it's related to the current situation, yes, later on, you might remove it. So that's why. I meant by updating your CV. Uh, next question, is resume shorter than CV? What I understood, yes, resume should be maximum one to two pages, hardly three pages. CV is no limit, especially in medicine, because uh, especially uh, in academic medicine, because the, they know you're going to put your uh, previous work, your experience, your lectures, your uh, research studies. Uh, uh, so this is going to take a, a lot of uh, spaces. Uh, in general, doctors uh, use CV more than their resume, but I uh, learned this even this year. Uh, I wrote my CV, uh, resume beside the CV, so I took the important points from CV, then explained them uh, in details and resume. So again, as my friend told me, put life into your CV. CV is uh, just a, a list of points, doesn't say what did you do. So uh, mention what was done, but why or what kind. Uh, of stuff, this is more resume. And you can uh, see this uh, on, uh, you can read this on a book so, or, or uh, internet. Next question, how can we take the recommendations? How can we ask for it? Uh, if you impress your uh, uh, consultant, you impress your mentor, you'll get it. So uh, I received probably only two or three requests to give a letter of recommendation for somebody. I did not feel much impressed by the action. So you can see this, my letter was not very strong. I changed the, the wording. Uh, when I, for example, I say, I uh, uh, strongly uh, recommend this person. That's a very strong word. I say, I recommend him. That's OK. Uh, short one or detailed one. Uh, I usually comment about the behavior, uh, fitting with the team, uh, if they give lectures, meaning show interest. Uh, I write the lecture type and so on. I mentioned about their uh, knowledge, about interaction with patients and, and, and uh, nurses and so on. So how to get it based on your rotation? Just uh, know the consultant not working with him. I usually apologize for giving any uh, recommendation because I did not know this person in details. Again, this is a witness. I have to witness this person. So I have to uh, base this on fact. Fact meaning actions work. Does the research have to be within the specialty I'm interested in or not necessarily? I don't think, to, my, to me, it's not necessarily, because if you're, especially for your first or two uh, second uh, studies, because this, uh, you're learning more about the structure, how to do research, how to have the literature review, the research question, manage, uh, the IRB, ethics, uh, surveys, data collection, analysis, and writing manuscript and publication. So it's a lengthy process. You're learning about the structure more than learning about the topic. If you find a topic uh, fits your specialty, that's better, of course, uh, but not necessarily. Uh, and you can prepare uh, for this question if it comes up, why you did uh, research study about pediatric and you're asking for uh, or looking for telemedicine. You can say the topic was important or that uh, person, the mentor, was an excellent mentor. I learned from him a lot. This was opportunity available to me at the time. So you, you, you prepare for the uh, answer. Uh, but to me, I don't think it must be the same uh, specialty. It uh, could be a, a case report. Case report is an interesting one. 
uh, again, could be in a surgical case, and I did medicine. So, uh, so what it can be? This is always overlap between specialties. Uh, uh, we reported a case here about peritoneal diagnosis patient, mainly surgical skills. Surgeon reported it, but put my name with him because it was my case, and I, I wrote the section about the medical side, and he wrote the section about surgical side. So it can be both. Right. How could we write our skills and quality? Uh, if you do your assessment, I did uh, one assessment about the, what's called a strengths finder, called strengths finder 2.0 book, I think. It comes with a CD and you can go online or, or with a code, you go online and you uh, answer so many questions and give you your report. So I am an achiever, learner, disciplined, uh, com uh, competitor, I forgot it, a focused person. Those are my five, five top qualities. I put it in my resume. And uh, they can be a, a excellent quality, but also they can sometimes spill over and cause bad uh, actions. If I'm very focused about the patient, I might forget about the family. I might forget about resident. So uh, I have to know how to answer uh, to mitigate the, the, the bad uh, effect of those uh, qualities. So going through courses, leadership courses, uh, personality uh, assessment profile, all this, you can uh, learn about your quality skills. You can get this from your rotations. If you did the blood gas, for example, and you did it very well, then you know that you're a good person uh, how to do blood gas. Uh, ask the resident or the uh, fellow registrar to give you feedback. That's an excellent point. Uh, I know about my qualities. I heard it from other people. I remember the program director during fellowship, he uh, made me a chief fellow. Uh, and he told my friend, I'm a team player. So I, I heard this from him, and I thought about it. Yes, that's true. So uh, this one, my, my, one of my qualities. Okay, where are we at here? Uh, how we can answer interviews if you ask regarding that? So um, as I mentioned, you have some facts. Uh, letter of recommendation, evaluation, feedback session, uh, courses. Uh, you have some evidence. Uh, uh, an incident. You were a time working ER rotation. Uh, a patient came, collapsed and you worked in a team to resuscitate that patient and patient survived. So that was an excellent uh, experience for you. You mentioned that you work with a resident, you help in uh, uh, putting a line, given uh, writing orders, uh, teamwork. So this is a quality for you, you can mention. Uh, next question. If my English is good, will taking the IELTS exam be helpful? To me, I think yes. Uh, even if it's valid only for two or three years, but it's give you confidence, uh, you, you assess yourself, where are you at? This is an important exam in the West, TOEFL or IELTS. So even if you pass it now, you don't need it in the next two or three years, but you pass it, you know where are you at? Where are your weak points? You might work on it. Uh, and give you confidence, if you need it later, you can take the exam quickly. So I, I would say yes, better to do it. I'm a man of uh, going to so many courses and, and lectures and webinars, because as I mentioned earlier, one of my qualities, a learner. So uh, I love learning, I love reading, I love uh, acquiring knowledge. It might not help you now, you never know, it will help you maybe five or 10 years later. I read a whole book about ECG when I was in Syria. Cover, 200 pages, cover to cover. Just because I loved uh, to read ECG, I thought I would do cardiology. When I went to Canada, I read more than 20,000 EKGs over uh, nine years because as internists, you have to read ECGs. I didn't, never thought that I would read so much ECG, but I already built the base. So nothing in this life is wasted. Whatever you do, you will see the results sooner or later. Is it illegal to ask about mar marital status, race, religion? Uh, I don't know about this in Saudi Arabia, but in the West, they can ask you. Uh, I'm a Muslim, so they expect me to take off an Eid. Maybe I have a fasting month Ramadan. I'll take it as elective, not be on call. So I would say for religion in the West, uh, they might ask you. If you don't want to answer, that's fine. But they give you the option. Race, they, they know we're from Middle East, so we're Arabs and so on. Uh, marital status, I, it's in my CV. Married, my wife has this degree, and uh, I have those kids with this uh, ages. Why? Because they're important to know for a job, maybe not for training, for a job, do, can you have a good fit? It's very important to, uh, uh, for you to stay in a job or leave the job, move on to other job, based on the family. Family has a big impact on, on your profession. Uh, if they're not happy, you will not be happy. So your job is important uh, in, the, in, in the equation, but also your family uh, 
life is important. What are the book for an intern? Uh, there's one uh, a Washington manual uh, for internship, and there's one for residency. I'll probably send the, the names to uh, Al Hamoud and can maybe uh, uh, distribute it. Uh, Washington manual for internship, and there's another one for also internship, a Kaplan, I think it was Kaplan. And for residency, there's one, I forgot the whole book, more than 250 pages, but I, I can share it to the only can email me, I'll send you by email, inshallah. At which year should I start working on research and how many should I do in order to enter a competitive specialty? Uh, I don't know details about the Saudi Arabia itself, uh, but I think earlier is better. In your second, third year, you can start. If you, you guys, I think, at least in KSU, there's a research uh, course in the third year, if I remember right. So that's a starting point, but do not let it go till your fifth year. I, I, I received many students at the end of their fifth year, they want to do research. I said that it's too late. Once they start internship and calls, it's difficult to really find a time for it. The best time for you, fourth and fifth year in Saudi Arabia, because it's more focused uh, training. You do just uh, one specialty at a time, medicine at a time, surgery, pediatric, and so on. Third year is very uh, busy, but fourth, fifth year, you have more time to do it. Then if you need to continue as an intern, that's fine. At least that collection should be finished before you graduate from a school, because uh, that's a bulk of work. Uh, I have a couple of projects uh, are frozen now because my interns started residency and now Corona, so everything kind of froze. So try to take advantage sooner uh, better than later. At which year should I start working on research? And we discuss this one. Uh, I'm sorry. Till now, you cannot cho cho choose your specialty. That's uh, normal. Do not think it's uh, uh, wrong. Uh, so I don't know what, uh, this is from uh, Hassan. I don't know what here are you in, but uh, go to the point, discuss with other people, uh, take experience, so go do some rotation. If you have uh, time to volunteer, volunteer in the hospital, just go and observe, observership. That's what I did in the UK, observership for three months. Uh, so you get a taste. Uh, if you're, you should have at least some taste of maybe two or three specialties. You're leaning toward more uh, surgery, more than psychiatry. Okay, go to a surgical field and, and try to observe a surgeon and his job. Just shadow him for maybe a week or two or even a month if you can. Uh, so I don't know situation. Of course, there's the legal issues and requirements and you have to apply and get approval. Look at those uh, issues, but do not uh, uh, stop here and say, I don't know what to choose. Look for opportunities. Talk to other people and do not forget istikhara, istikhara, istikhara. It's very important. Istishara and istikhara. Do we get asked questions about conferences and webinars uh, we attend in our interviews? It depends. Uh, I don't think there's any prescriptive list of questions you'll be asked about. It depends on the uh, person interviewing you. Uh, and depends how much time they have, 15 minutes, an hour, uh, depends about residency, fellowship, program, other program, country, other country. Uh, so uh, if it's in your CV, probably you'll be asked about it. So you should uh, uh, show them or tell them what you learned from this conference. What uh, lectures did you attend? Uh, did you go to the poster session? Did you meet with people? It's very important in the West, going to conference, not only for knowledge, going to conference in the West for networking which is lost our connection, networking. If you meet somebody there looking for a job, looking for residency, if you just say hello to him, introduce yourself, and maybe a couple of years later, you send him an email applying for uh, training, he might remember you. Because again, this connection, he met you. So he has some experience better than knowing nothing about you. That's why you saw, I put my picture on the first slide here. It's a Zoom meeting, but at least you need to know who I am, uh, how do I look like, because human connection is an important factor. Uh, how to know uh, the suitable specialty for me. I think this is a whole lecture. Uh, go back, think about what you like, what you don't like in your uh, study, in your undergraduate. Uh, try to tailor your internship that fits your, your uh, uh, area of interest. If you don't like surgery, maybe leave it till the end. Do medicine in the beginning, do pediatric in the beginning, because you're leaning toward pediatric or ER, whatever. Do your elective maybe early, before the time of uh, residency application. So you get uh, a taste, talk to a resident, talk to a consultant, talk, talk to friends, to family, even your parents, your, your uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, ask them, how do they see you fit in which specialty? 
they see you talk about uh, this specialty more than the other one, or you're talking, as my friend helped me choose nephrology. I was talking about nephrology in general, about the rotation, and he asked me just a, a word, why don't you do nephrology? That's changed my mind, give me perspective. So talk to other people, try to get perspective, try to uh, get experience, and, 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 uh, uh, and I've seen uh, people, it's not, nothing wrong. I, have, uh, I met one resident, was with us in medicine, I gave lecture to family medicine uh, uh, November last year, and he was in family medicine. He changed his uh, specialty after, I don't know, a, one or two years. That's normal. There's nothing wrong with it. He could not, uh, uh, doesn't feel, he did not see his, himself fit in the medicine department, or medicine specialty. He changed to family medicine. Nothing wrong about it. Again, my, 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 I will keep saying this over and over and over. Does not matter what specialty you choose, as long as it fits you and you can do your best and you can be top in that specialty. You can, again, make uh, an impact, add a value, uh, have significance uh, to other people's life, society, uh, country, and so on. Can we go to interviews with a CV that's not oriented to one specialty? Uh, does removing the irrelevant specialties is better? I don't think there's a clear answer for that. Uh, of course, if you choose a specialty and, and most of your CV talk about other specialty, you'll be asked about it, why you don't have much, you don't show in your CV that you're really interested about our specialty. Is it because you applied to other specialty and got denied, was not accepted, so you changed your mind to come to our specialty? So it's, it's a kind of a default uh, uh, backfall specialty, as we mentioned early about family medicine. Then you have to show them that you really gonna do a good job in that specialty. Maybe it was your second specialty, uh, second interest. You were focusing about first one, and your luck was not on your side, so you did not uh, uh, get that specialty. But you'll do a good job or excellent job in the second specialty. So show them that you have interest in that specialty, even if your CV doesn't support it 100%, but have some facts, some experience that uh, you liked uh, this uh, uh, specialty. One of the interviews in the US, they asked me, give us a real case, a challenge. He went through. So I mentioned about the case. We had a 45-year-old uh, male came to ER, arrested in ER, had heart attack. We did CPR for an hour and a half. Uh, he required a temporary pacemaker. Then he had a cath. Four, day late, four days later, he went home walking with good outcome. So I mentioned about this experience. This is the only experience I had, good experience in Syria at the time, was good uh, support. We gave him pressors, intubation, and fluids, and pacemaker. Uh, all this, so it was a good experience uh, I, I mentioned about. Last question, can we go to interviews with a CV? Oh, I think it's the same um, question. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ahmed. Uh, we really appreciate uh, you giving us your time and sharing your uh, experience with us. And thank you everyone for attending. Uh, inshallah, we will uh, post on Twitter the um, evaluation form and uh, send you a drive with uh, a drive link with everything that the doctor has said he will share with us. Thank you all for attending. Thank you very much. Good luck, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.